Okay, hello everyone. This is Victor Momo, and this is um, a video similar to one I just posted on the sequence function. But I promise to show how I would probably have solved it if I didn't have the sequence function, and so to say, if I didn't have Office 365. So, what's the question again? But just to retreat, really, I have um, this all in one column, and this is my desire this is what i probably copied from maybe the internet and when i pasted it all came in one column so what i want to do now is to split it you know from one column into the appropriate rows and columns like i have here so as you can see this is your first name last name gender age and nationality right which is exactly what you have this way Okay, so if you did a copy and a transpose like I showed in the other video, you'll get, you know, what you want. But you can't keep doing that, especially when you have, um, you know, a lot of um, uh, rows of data. Okay, so what do you know? This is first name. That's what you have on row one. Last name, which is the next thing you need, is on row two. You know, and the sequence goes on like that, right? One, two, three, four, five. You know that the next one here, which is B, will be on row six. So you have six, seven. You go that way. Then I'm just going to, oops. Uh, yeah, I expected that. <laughs> That's my system for you. Can't act up sometimes. Okay, no problem. Then let's take this down. Put all the borders. Okay. Yeah. So, this is really what you want to do. Once you can create this sequence, you know, then you can feed that into the index function and you would have, you know, what you want. Essentially, if you say index, give me what's in row one, it will give you first name. If you say index, give me what's in row six, it will give you bio and so on. So, the question now is how do we create this? You know sequence that we have here in the other video i use the sequence function which makes it very easy but for non maybe office 365 users maybe this is a reason why you want to move to office 365 we can do this using the rows and columns it's something i can easily write but it's good to kind of see how it works right now this can be broken down into two there's the you know row part of it and there's the column part what this reminds me of is um in high school maths where we used to do sequences and series arithmetic progression you remember then that they will say the nth term of a series for those who maybe like maths a little is a plus n minus one d a is your first term n is number of times d is your common difference okay common in the sense that t2 minus t1 or t3 minus t2 or t4 is all the same so there's a difference of one across here when you look down this way there's a difference of what five so let's try and write you know the end term for maybe the rows then we start to see a pattern when you go write this one you will see that the a here is one which is the first term one plus what n minus one multiplied by d this is the difference between the first and the second term if you can take that for simplicity one if you go to the next one your first time is now six so it's going to be six plus what you can see flash fill already telling me i think i know what you're doing <laughs> the next one will be what 11 plus what n minus one star one so you see that there are two parts to it there's the n minus one portion and there's the one six and eleven portion the one six and eleven is also a series in itself right which has a first term of one and what a common difference of what of five because one six eleven six minus one five and so on so it's in two pieces there's this part here that helps you to create down the rows as you go one six eleven then there's this n minus one part which allows things to increment from left to right right because the sequence is really the same if you look at column one and you look at column two the difference between the rows is just five 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 but the difference is that here you're starting at one here you're starting at two here you're starting at three so you need to have those pieces to allow you you know increment so we just need to break this into you know two pieces which we've done one plus five times n minus one will help us with the rows then the columns is just n minus one so let me try write that here so one plus what five 
the n minus 1 because this is the part that works with the rows so you want a situation that when you drag this down to the next row the formula would increment when you drag down it increments so you would need here the rows function you could use the row function but the rows is actually better i can do a different video to explain why that is you do one to one what this means is how many rows do i have between row one and row one the answer is one when you drag this formula down because of the dollar before the one here the, this would remain same and this would become dollar one column two meaning how many rows do i have between row one and row two both inclusive that would then give you what two you know and it will keep increasing like that three four so that's what you need here so this is five what times n right minus one okay so that's just what i've written here and you need to then add that to the columns part the columns part is just n minus one but don't forget this part is what makes it increment from left to right okay so for this you need a function that as you drag from left to right it increments you can't use the row function here if you use the row function once you're on the same row it doesn't increment so here you need what the columns function okay columns you can do a to a you make sure you put a dollar before um, what's it called the first a such that here what it, this means is how many columns do i have between column a and column a that's obviously one as you drag this to the right this will become columns a to b how many columns do i have between a and b it becomes two three four five and you create this sequence that way okay so it is columns a a minus one so let's see what this gives us so this gives us one if you drag this down you see your sequence if you drag it this way you see that you can have the sequence so this is really what i need this expression is all i need to feed into an index function once i can feed this into an index function then i'll be fine so let me just copy that portion out let's come here and get rid of all this mess okay so i'm going to do my index index function this is my array everything here i can lock it for my row I just need to put that expression there. That expression is all I need. That's all. For the column, because my array obviously has only one column, I don't need a column argument for the index. So I do this. Okay, first name. So I drag to the right. You see that? And then I bring it down. And I have the names I need. The only other thing I might need to include here is maybe an if error. In the event where you are dragging beyond, so to say, Maybe if I didn't select A to A here and I did A1 to A40 and I was dragging beyond that ring, it will start giving me a reference error because it can't find, you know, the cells I'm dealing with. So the if error will just help me handle that. So this is kind of how it works. But as you remember in the other video, I just used what a sequence function and that made it uh, really easy. But this alternative still exists for those who are not yet Office 365 subscribers. Okay, so if you like this video, you can click the like button. You can subscribe to the channel Excel Moments. And like I always say, if you can think it, Excel can do it. I'm out.